live in. So several times in history, the Balkans uh, were predictor of the future in Europe. The first world war, in a way, started on the territory of later uh, Yugoslavia. While the breakup uh, of this multi-ethnic and multi-religious country heralded uh, the growing nationalism and fundamentalism in other parts of Europe, as well as in the Middle East, from where millions uh, of refugees want, to, want now to come to the increasingly xenophobic uh, Europe. Such processes of division and hostility are in the West often described as Balkanization. We know it's a very pejorative term, the Balkanization. A term that some use uh, also to describe the current developments in Syria. At least in the recent years, however, these processes have been undoubtedly due also to the increasing inter inter interferences of international financial capital in the economic and political situations in the region. As you know, one of the main routes uh, of the mass exodus from the Middle East has until recently cut across the Balkans, starting in Greece. So the question is, of course, what then the Balkans herald today? Just before the EU and Turkey conclu concluded uh, what has been termed in media very often uh, a shady deal, it means an additional three billion uh, in financial assistance, abolition of the visa system, and one on one exchange of Syrian refugees in Turkey for Syrians in Greece. So the governments in the region decided to close the Balkan route for refugees. The closing of the Balkan route uh, precipit uh, precipitated um, a humanitarian catastrophe uh, in Greece and the expulsion of refugees back to Turkey. The general attitude of all governments in European Union seems to be that such great numbers of refugees are unmanageable, the border should be closed, and that even more restrictive uh, asylum policies and security measures should be introduced. On the other hand, we also witness numerous protests, uh, analyses, and art projects that are se severely critical of the new European borders, the growing xenophobia, lack of empathy, and bureaucratic treatment of refugees. We often hear that the official procedures and media reports completely depersonalize uh, the refugees, journalists, who opposed, the, uh, who opposed this portrait, um, the poignant stories of uh, individuals and families, and artists paint the refugees' portraits in order to individualize them. In this way, we all emphasize the fact that refugees are people just like us, people who used to have jobs and homes, that there are intellectuals and artists among them. In short, that they are people who could contribute greatly to the development of our European society and become its useful members by integrating in it. Their integration in existing society seems to be Europe's bright future. It is, of course, right to see an individual with his or her own story in every refugee, but this concern often does not go beyond a simple humanitarian gesture, overlooking, for the most part, the refugees' political potential. And this potential, this political potential, lies in their collectivity and to an even greater extent in the collectivization of their and our problem. Recognizing the common interest shared by refugees and the, the, the privileged Europeans could 
lead to mobilizing demands for more radical changes of European society, a society that has lost the idea of community based on solidarity and equality. How can artists tap into this new collective potential? How can they tap into this political potential in becoming? And how can they start imaginative, utopian, and participatory uh, processes that will help co-create the idea of collectivity based on greater international solidarity, equality, and a more equitable division of a society's wealth. Choosing the Balkans for one of the main routes into Europe, the refugees could have hardly revived a better metaphor for the collapse of collectivity and social relationship. A greater part of the Balkan route over the territory of former Yugoslavia followed a highway that used to be called the Brotherhood and Unity Highway in the days of Tito. Refugees were pushed off this main traffic axis across the Yugoslav part of the Balkan Peninsula and forced to walk in the fields along riverbanks in the woods, returning to the road only occasionally when we have to cross the border. Understandably, they were unaware of the history of this highway, whose construction began shortly after the Second World War with the aim um, with the aim to connect all of Yugoslavia from Slovenia to North Macedonia's border with the Greece in the south. During the war uh, in Croatia, and so the highway shut down for traffic until war ended in 95. Uh, the Brotherhood and Unity Highway had been more or less closed for migrants on the Balkan route. For many of us living in the territory of former Yugoslavia, this highway built in part by voluntary uh, youth brigades and, uh, after the um, Second World War, importantly symbolizes the idea of collectivity and solidarity. In socialist Yugoslavia, there was free healthcare, healthcare schools, and kindergartens for everyone, Nearly every village, village had a cultural center and every town its museum open and working, which we know it's not the case today. Uh, so the day today, the picture is quite different, of course. Education and health care need to be paid. A majority of main museums in the region are closed or else, uh, or, uh, else barely surviving. People are losing their jobs. Ruthless austerity policies have swept across Europe with the greatest number of victims in the Balkans, starting with Greece. Thus, the Balkan route symbolizes not only the refugees' loss of homes, but also our loss of our communities, not only our former common country, but society in general and society in general, here I mean, of course, the solidarity and um, social care and all these things. Some of the refugee centers along the route were housed in the former factories where workers from various republics of Yugoslavia used to work. Many of the factories failed as a result of the current economic crisis or else greatly downsized. Looking in European countries, uh, looking at European <coughs> countries, countries encircled by barbed wire, like Slovenia today. So sorry that we are in Ljubljana and you are not uh, aware about the barbed wire uh, in the border. So, like in Slovenia, we cannot help to think of a prison or even concentration camp. Someone, someone linked. Uh, the, uh, the protected, paranoid Slovenia 
and the river of refugees that we witnessed uh, until recently, of course, uh, to two ships passing with the passengers, uh, passengers mutely observing each other. Yet the two sets of passengers have much more in common what it might seem at the first glance. They are connected by loss, the loss of community, be it in homeland or a society of solidarity, which has been replaced in Europe by a society of austerity and security. With its present uh, and its also historical and cultural past, including the experience of artistic avant-garde, the Balkan route represents a great potential for shaping the imaginary of different alternative community. A community that unites the migrant experience with the memory of a society that did manage, at least for a few decades, to maintain brotherhood and unity between diverse nations, a society in which workers could stay on in factory for their entire careers, and in which the idea of non-alignment, as Yelena was saying before, of the first of the world war took shape. The Balkan route leads to the recognition of the common interests of all migrants of the world, those who have lost their homes and those who have lost their society, and with it, not only the conditions for a better life, but also their dreams of a future.